Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range. And it might not look it, but it's below zero today. Now what we're going to be talking about today is reloading when you've got no load data and why you should get a chronograph. Now for those of you in the US, you are living in a land of luxury, despite powder shortages, insofar as you've got load data and components that match the load data for practically any calibre you could want to shoot. However, in Europe, we don't have that luxury. Now, a lot of the problem here is that we're using European powders for which there's very, very limited load data. Now, often we end up interpolating from similar cartridges, from different load data books, and uh, trying things out, basically. Now I'm sure hearing this is making a lot of you clench your buttocks extremely tightly because there is the 11th commandment of thou shalt not load outside the load data. However, we don't have that luxury. Now what the chronograph does is take a whole lot of the guesswork and the risk out. Now why does it take a lot of the risk and the guesswork out? Well, because basically if you're running a powder with a sensible burn rate, with a sensible charge weight, and you're getting the velocities you expect to be seeing, you know that there's unlikely to be anything dangerous going on. Now I know we do a lot of Swiss content on here, but this is a perfect example, because what we're trying to do is recreate as close as possible the 7.5 by 53.5 GP90 cartridge, well in fact something about halfway between the GP90 and the GP90-23, with a similar powder volume as in the original. The idea is to get as close as we can with this H&N uh, 200 grain uh, copper-plated bullet uh, and that will then serve as a starting basis for further developments and I'm hoping that a friend is going to make me a uh, healed bullet mould that I can paper patch and get even closer to this but what we're looking for is the same uh, roughly the same powder volume but powder weight more so so what we've got here is uh, a load ladder from 32 to 34 grains of uh, reload Swiss RS40 that's about equivalent to Vitavuri N130 and it gives about the same powder weight as the original PC88. Now as a starting point I've got a guesstimation helpfully provided by a couple of viewers who got quick load. Thank you very much, you know who you are and uh, we'll see if we get to uh, 2,000 feet per second or not. Now we're starting low and working up and I'm sure I'm going to get comments about load density but the original uh, GP90 cartridge only has about 30, 31 grains of powder. It's about 50, 60% load density. Off the top of my head, I think it's nearer. 60% load density. Uh, we're not talking about a 10% load density of this sort of powder here. There's no risk at all of detonation or anything like that. And just to make it even safer, instead of using the 1889, I'm using the 1889 96, my unicorn, uh, because it is stronger. Right, so the chronograph's working. I've got my data book, got my pen. You don't want to see all this, I'll just uh, speed it up and cut it to the point where I get bored. Okay, so the hottest one there, 34 grains, uh, brings us just over 1800 feet per second. So we're about 200 feet per second short, but it does obturate better, which I know because it doesn't squirt a bit of gas at my forehead. And um, yeah, in any case, we've got a, a good baseline and we can work up from here. Now, when you're working outside the <laughs> like this, the general rule is take it easy, better safe than sorry. And the problem is if I'd done a ladder up to 35, 36, seven grains, and I'd reach my velocity early on, I'd have had a whole lot of work pulling all those bullets. So next time I'm out here, I'll work it up to 200 feet per second, and I'll see the load I end up with at the end. Now in a later video, once I've finally got my final load that I want to be working with, 
I'll go into detail on how to reload this particular cartridge because it's got a few specificities that go outside the norms. So uh, you look out for that. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe, like our Facebook page, and I hope to see you again on the range sometime. Bye.